national champions, 1980. Cardinals have won the national championship. 75th NCAA college basketball champions. All right, welcome everybody to episode number 73 of the Third Banner Pod. I have to say thank you to everybody watching the show over the last year. Definitely appreciate it, everybody. Um, tonight, you got myself, you got Kyle, and Pat, and Ty, and here in just a few moments, we'll be bringing on a member of the 2013 National Championship team, Stephen Van Trees. Uh, but before we do that, guys, how are you doing tonight? I'm uh, I'm hanging in there, man. It's uh, it's the stretch run of tax season. I, I have a feeling that I'm gonna be the first one out on many of these uh, rounds in this game tonight. But uh, I'm I'm pumped for tonight's episode and to uh, get some hot takes from uh, Stephen Van Trees, man. Yeah. I can't wait. It's going to be a good night. I always love seeing anyone from the 2013 team. Steven Van Trees is one of my favorite players I ever got to watch, so I can't wait for that. And I can't wait to win another game since I don't think I've lost a game since I've been on here. I'm not bragging. I'm not bragging. It's all humility. You know, first winner of Jeopardy and only winner of Louisville Sports Jeopardy in the history of mankind, but I'm not bragging. Not hey, at all. Pat's on a win streak right now, right? Pat, you That's won right. You won Will Fortune last, so – that's right. I wasn't. I wasn't there. I'm just saying. well. It's gonna be. It's gonna be fun. I'm excited for our game, and I'm excited for Steven Van Trees. Uh, Steven's one of my favorite players too, man. He he was so he always did the dirty work. All the stuff that you just you need on a team. He he always was the first one to do that. And yeah, um, you know, Louisville fans are always gonna remember how valuable he was to those teams and that championship team. So Ty, why don't you describe the game we're gonna play tonight, and then we'll we'll bring him on if you don't. Yeah. So we're going to play some old-fashioned bullshit. Um, so the, the way it's going to work is later we're going to pull up a, uh, a wheel that I have. It's going to have 10 topics. Uh, we're going to spin it. It's going to land on a topic. One, all for Louisville example, topics. All Louisville-related. Um, one of them, for example, could be 1,000-point scores. So we'll have one of the guys go first. They're going to name a 1,000-point score. Or not, they could name even Van Dries. They could say anybody, <laughs> and and it's going to be up to the next contestant <laughs> to either name another player. I always say because I was watching him in the lobby. I knew he could. <laughs> or or call bullshit. Um, so if the player calls bullshit, we're going to go check it, make sure they scored a thousand points. If they did, the person who said the fake name or wrong name is going to be eliminated, and. Uh, we're going to take points. So whenever everyone's eliminated, the last one standing is going to get a point. Should be up to five points because we have 10 topics. So if I did the math right, which I'm not great at math, so we'll see. But I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be comedy, rapid fire stuff. Some of the names I think we're going to hear is going to be hilarious. Um, some of the topics will be good. So it's going to be a fun All time. Right. Looks like the people are filling in the chat. Good to see you. Good to see you guys tonight. I know it's Friday night, so – we appreciate anybody that can join with us. That being said, it looks like we've got uh, Stephen Van Trees in the lobby here. So without further ado, we want to introduce former player, national champion. The Third Banner pod has a member of the Third Banner, which, by the way, is real. We'll never forget it. It's a thing. It absolutely is. Stephen Van Trees. Hey, welcome. guys. How y'all doing? Thanks for having welcome me Welcome to the Third Banner pod. How are you tonight? I'm good. I unexpectedly uh, had multiple people show up at my house tonight. So I, I said, I had to go downstairs. I'm going to jump on this <laughs> podcast. And they were like, you have to throw in a polo. And I was like, well, here we go. So here we are. That's, I, we love it. it looks, good looking polo, polo, dude. Looks great. So. Looks great. So I want to just start off by asking, you know, obviously we, you know, you're, you're, you were one of my favorite players on that team. Did all the dirty work, as somebody said earlier, junkyard dog type of player, and every team that's really successful needs a player like that. But what have you been up to these days, man? So, yeah, after I played at Louisville, I played overseas for three years in Japan. Um, I enjoyed every moment of that. But then that, when I got back, I got in the real world and got into real estate. And uh, me and my wife worked together at Simmons and Realtors and doing very well and enjoying it. And it's been, it's been a good uh, career for me and my wife. Now you are before I hand it off. You are a fellow Hoosier, born and raised, right? Yes, sir. Uh, now, are you still living in that area, or are you here local in Louisville? 
No, I'm here local. I'm okay. uh, on on the east end. Um, I'm I'm here to stay. I mean, I love Louisville. Um, even even after if we didn't win a championship, I probably would still end it up here. I love it here that much. Right on, right on. Pat, you want to go ahead? Yeah, <clears throat> Stephen, appreciate you being on, man. Um, I always wonder, you know, I mean, obviously there'll probably be a lot of Louisville questions tonight, yeah. but I always wonder guys that go overseas and play what that experience is like, um, how the setup is like, and, and just kind of tell tell us about your time over in Japan. So, yeah, in Japan, I think Japan was a lot different than for a lot of other people I know in their experiences, meaning um, Japan's a very family-oriented type of culture and their the way they run their organizations. Like, if you're a good person and you do the right things, but you might not be the best athlete or someone, they're going to keep you. There's a lot of – not saying that was me, actually. I'm talking about, like, some other older guys that have been there for, t like, a decade, and they're like, well, I can't believe you're still on a team, but – you know, again, if you're still doing the right things, but uh, overseas in Japan overall, like they, it was good basketball. Um, they usually had about three, three Americans per team. So the weird thing about it though, and they, you can only play two Americans for two of the quarters of the game and then one American for two of the quarters. So it really messed with how, you know, you really played guys and, their yeah. and stuff, especially when you had three guys on the team. So, you know, everyone's trying to play because, you're, you're playing for your next contract every year. So that's the difference right. being a pro overseas versus um, being able to sign like multi-year uh, contracts, you know, if you were in the NBA. So, um, but the pay was great. Um, that was one thing I loved. I mean, Japan, like there's a lot of people I know in different countries that they didn't get their money on time or in or never got paid. So wow. for me, it was always on time. The best thing, it was all like they paid for your taxes. So every, every dollar I made, like, was accounted accounted for i mean it got sent to my account here in the states and uh nice. i loved every nice to hear that, that. <laughs> so yeah we were it, we were i was living a good time i mean it was awesome over there i got to travel got to meet a lot of cool i still talk to my teammates over there that are still playing i still talk to a lot of my japanese teammates as well that's awesome steven i had a question and i if this is um a little too spicy you you can go ahead and tell me now but <laughs> spice um, it up I know all of us are just dying to hear. What is your favorite Rick Patino story that you can tell? <laughs> we all are just dying to. I, you have so many, I know. I do, and it's tough because I'm like, how where do I want to go with this? But I, for me, though, I mean, heck, I can go with like who he was crushing in the locker room. There's so many. I, I got. I mean. I, I got how uh, how B PG do I got to keep it is real a question, but I mean I I don't that's have up a, to you and Rick Patina. <laughs> that's up to you and Rick. Not on the broadcast there, so we're good with anything. I mean, obviously, I've heard everything under the sun come out of his mouth towards players and such, which was it was fun. It's definitely not how you talk to players nowadays. Um, he's definitely so. Me and Mike Mary actually went up to Butler and saw Coach P uh, when they were playing Butler. Uh, St. John's versus Butler, and it was weird. I mean, this is one of my most recent story. I literally, Coach Patino, like his one of the strength trainers, rolling out a speaker, and he's sitting there tweeting. I said, "What the f, Coach? <laughs> what what is going on?" Like, because we weren't allowed to have Twitter, and they're playing. I remember that. They're, and they're blasting, you know, rap music during walkthroughs, and I'm like, walkthroughs for us were an hour of practice, and if you screwed up, you were you were uh, not going to be playing that game. So. um one of my, for me, and I was actually talking about someone. So, so Jorts played in Japan as well, uh, Josh Harrelson. Yeah. And he's, I think he's still actually over in Japan as we speak. And it's funny, I had good conversation about, because I asked him, I said, hey, like you, he had a coming out party versus us. And I mean, he basically, what he had, like 20 and 20, I think. Or something yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't want to relieve, we don't want to yeah. relieve that one, man. That was. Well, well the guy stepped on a basketball. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's he it's heavy on my heart because I didn't get to play at all in that UK game because Yeah, you I, weren't there either. That's right. I missed one I messed up on one out of bounds play during walkthrough. So yeah. walkthrough was at like 9 30, 10 a.m. And I did great during walkthrough, like, oh, I'm excited, I think I'm gonna play a ton yeah. of minutes for this UK game. I messed up on one out of bounds play and Coach Patino wanted to set up an example for me and didn't play me at all. 
Oh, like, oh my God. And like, I mean, as a U of L player, like, you know, like the UK game is the game that you want to be yes. in for sure. And uh, I didn't get my opportunity my sophomore year and it literally crushed me because um, I was like, is, I could have helped, you know. That is an awesome story to know, because let me tell you, back in the old days when I was on the message boards, I started a thread and put, where is Steven Van Trees when you've got <laughs> two big men that are hurt? And you've got the junkyard dog that, that can get rebounds and can really scrap down low. And he hardly played at all. If I didn't even know you did play, to be honest, because yeah, I guess you didn't. Bear. But that's awesome to hear the backstory. I got a little more. Later, I too, forgot all you. about that. I got you a little, little more for you, too, how the media helps, you know, sometimes helps the players out. So hear me yeah. out. So the next game I had started versus South Florida, had my first double-double in college, and it had great rebounds. Coach Pichettino got crushed for not playing me in the media, like for questions saying, like, why didn't he play Steven? You know, he's obviously one of our best rebounders on the team. And so I played again the next game, started. We played versus Villanova. It was a close game. We ended up losing. And literally, as soon as we got in the locker room, he goes, where the fuck were your rebounds at tonight? Like going <laughs> off on me. Um, so that's Coach Pichettino. So – yeah, um, oh, that's great. Oh. So that that there's a good story for you. So <laughs> that's I, I was good trying one. to, but at the end of the day, Coach Patino, he, when you step between those lines, you knew what type of person he was. He wanted that he expected the best out of you. Um, outside the lines, I mean, Coach Patino is the best. I mean, I I mean, I still talk to Coach, you know, anytime I can, and he's he still will support any of his players. It's awesome. So, yeah, that's awesome. So, so to continue talking about coaches, now I noticed at, you know, we obviously have a new coach, Patrick Kelsey. I noticed you were at the press conference. I saw him walk past and shake your hand. What was that experience like? And did you get to talk to him much other than that? And what are your first impressions of, of, of Pat Kelsey so far? So I'll be straight up. Of course, as me, I mean, I don't know if you saw, I haven't tweet, I don't usually tweet very often. One, because right. I wasn't doing it in college, so I'm not really on Twitter very often, but mm -hmm. I tweeted, because I'll be honest, I wanted Richard Pitino uh, sure. as the next player, but sure. after after I talked to my circle of basketball people that are still fully invested in it, because I'm not in it every day, um, mm -hmm. it's different, and when they told me about Pat and what he's about, I was like, I'm on board, like, that's, mm -hmm. that's who we need, and um, so I went to the press conference. Obviously, the press conference was awesome. He crushed it. Um, and he actually recruited me a little bit. So I was actually dealing with Dino more because Dino was the head coach. But when he was at Wake Forest, he was on staff. So that's how he remembered me. And it was funny because when I shook his hand, he goes, it's really good to see you is how he responded to it. Because he because I don't you know, I hadn't seen him in years. And then uh, but anyways, my circle of basketball people told me all about him and um, mm. I was super excited to actually have good – I didn't talk to him after the presser. Actually, I went down on campus on Tuesday, and I met a lot of people that are um, the new hires and whatnot, and I got to actually talk to Coach for about 15, 20 minutes in his office. And uh, it was funny. I told him I had PTSD in this office because it's Coach Patino's old office, and the conversations <laughs> in that office are not so, always the best conversations. So it was fun. <laughs> it was fun going in there on a good note. So Yeah, um, good. That's pretty cool that uh, he remembered you from all that time ago. And uh, we'll, we'll come back to the present day uh, here in just a moment. But I had one more blast from the past to bring up. Uh, we were talking before we went on, went live tonight about the, uh, the miracle on Maine comeback against Marquette. Uh, and if I, if I remember you had a couple of really big plays in that comeback, what do you remember from that particular game? Uh, and what was that game like for you as players? Um, I tell people when they ask me about it, um, that's one of my favorite games of all time that I ever played in. Uh, I remember all of the U of L fans leaving, and uh, <laughs> I remember me and PK, and we all looked at each other like, we're gonna come back, like, we're gonna do this. And I do remember getting the steal and starting the whole, you know, the whole spurt when we started on that roll. And uh, it's funny, I actually played overseas in Japan. My teammate was Devante Gardner, who played on, played on the Marquette, and Marquette, he was a uh -huh. And he, you know, I was talking to him. I said, and the best part is, so Devante invited me to his wedding about a year later. And you know who showed up to his wedding was Buzz Williams. And I got a picture with Buzz and I said, How do you like that game? And he goes, I don't want he goes, I don't want to talk about it. So it was, I bet he it was doesn't. 
It was great. So, like, even Devontae didn't want to talk about it because it was – I mean, it went from, you know, everyone in the stadium was leaving to everyone was trying to rush back to their seats, and it was awesome. That's and uh, it that, that was the loudest I've ever heard the young. Um, the last time I heard the young probably rocking like that was when we were beating Zion um, versus Duke, you know, versus Duke with when Mac was there. And uh, obviously – The, the misery on Main the, Street. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was the, so, that was the opposite. But the young, you know, to hear the young like that, I can't wait to see it rocking like that again. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully very soon, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, so, obviously, you won a national championship here. Um, I assume that's probably, you know, your your, your best memory. Um, if you could talk about, like, just the, the moments, the, the final seconds of that game and, and – knowing that that was about to happen and the emotions running through you at that time, I think that'd be cool to hear. Yeah. Um, I mean, as a player, um, you always dream about that moment. You never know how you're going to react. And like, that's literally how I was, I was like, this has actually happened. Like we're winning the national championship. And then to see, you know, the, the fireworks go off the boom and then the, the confetti and everything come into place. It was awesome. Um, for me personally, I mean, not to go back to my old, but I wasn't actually on the team before the year started. I don't know if you guys remember that. I was actually off the team for roughly two weeks. I remember um, that. So Coach Patino actually told me, hey, look, like you should transfer because you'll get more minutes. We're going to try to play Zach Price. And, you know, this guy, Montrez Harrell, is going to probably get some good minutes this year. And we, he, he was like, you need to play 15 to 25 minutes somewhere. And that was part of my PTSD in that conversation in his office where we were going back and forth. <laughs> And it turned out, like, I went and talked to, like, Brad Stevens, Matt Painter, and Coach Gross at Illinois. And those three guys were ready to go to battle for me to potentially get my – because at that time, I would have lost a year, and then I would have just had one year left. So, I'm like, it's such a – it was a waste of time and and all that for me mentally because I'm I was – I mean, I didn't want to leave. There was no – there was no, like, hey, I really want to leave. It was more like Coach was trying to help me out in that sense. But I I told him I never wanted to leave from the get-go. Um, so, but anyways, it worked out because Rakeem Buckles ended up going to FIU. It freed up one more scholarship and coach Patino immediately asked me to come back. And I remember I used to have the text message saved, but I don't anymore because my computer got stolen. Uh, but long story short, it, uh, he basically said like, Steven, we want you back and we're going to win a national championship this year. And I said, I will see you on Monday coach. And wow. so, wow. um, story. so back to the championship, like it, for me, like we, I knew after we went to the final four in 12, like we were going to be that team and we, we didn't have one bad practice in 13. We were, we were locked in and like guys like Montrez, obviously you saw how he did in the tournament um, in the, I mean, he really picked up in the big East tournament, but like Mm -hmm. Montrez was always locked in. So me and Montrez were always on the same team versus Gorgie and Shane. And that was always, I mean, that was a battle. Like practices were so much fun. I mean, we, we kicked each other's butts. And there's days that me and Tred, you know, the, the B team, so to speak, we would kick their butt. And it was – that's yeah. what made us better. And that was mm-hmm. – um, I mean, heck, me and Trez – I mean, I can't wait for to see Trez in this TBT. I'm excited to see. I know he's going to come with some, you know, some real buzz. I mean, I know he's coming off injury, but he's he's ready to roll. So, Yeah. Well, and, and thank God Patino sent you that text. Because, I mean, you played oh, a yeah. big role. Thank you. That. Yeah. That well, year, but the next year you played a really big role. I mean, you you know, you got 25 minutes a game your senior year. So I it's funny you say that too, because I'm I'm sitting there thinking about a lot of the memories and it takes a little bit for me to remember everything because it's so many, so many mm-hmm. times that happened at Louisville. I will say, and I, it doesn't bother me by any means. I don't I don't want it to come off this way, but like Coach Patino never really gave me my flowers until my senior year, my final yeah. year. And he lit after we won the A the AAC championship, he like pulled me aside that morning and he goes, Steven, you know, you're a very big reason we won this. And like really yeah. gave me, gave me love in front of the whole team and like showed all these highlights of me and doing certain things and whatnot in the game. He's like, you guys don't realize like Steven's doing all this for you guys. And he's never done that. Never given me my credit before. And that was a big moment for me. That was really cool. And like, it was just cool. Cause I was holding the trophy. It was a good time. So that was a big moment yeah. for me. And like everything I did for Louisville, 
um, leading up to that moment. And to this day, I'm still sick about losing the UK and the Sweet 16 because uh, we we could have went back to back. Very, oh, very yeah, easily. I think I think if you all win that game, then you all it's, win the whole thing, man. I, I'm with you. But it's, Not the year uh, UConn won and we beat them like. He three well, million yeah, points three times. Blew him out three times. We don't. We don't. We're not going to pour some sure it's a very sore show. <laughs> hey, there, listen, a, per, a personal a story. I, w- I went to that game, the UK game that we lost, and I was – I've never been more pissed after a game. And I'm driving me and my buddy well. home, and some, some UK fan cuts me off. <laughs> and I'm I literally <laughs> blare the horn – we're at a stoplight. I get out of the car and yell at the dude. You know, oh, I, no. I, I was so pissed. So <clears throat> I'm sure you were more pissed than me, Stephen. But just know, uh, I, I, I was, I was in a bad place too after that game. Well, and yeah, I, I really, I mean, I, I don't use officiating much as an excuse, and I'm not going to sit here and say there were things that couldn't have gone better. I did not it like it. I did not like the fact that Luke Hancock, who's on fire, by the, the way. Half. For no yeah. reason, got yeah. put, uh, a phantom foul and Trez too. Trez, is, Trez yeah. had a phantom foul called on it, and then and uh, I fouled out too. I want y'all to know that too. So and I didn't yeah. foul it all year. So there you go. Yeah. So yeah, and uh, I can't remember the guys. I think it was Dakari something, Dakari Johnson or something. Dakari, his is, best game ever. His yeah. best game ever, <laughs> and I mean he's out there playing football, but it's cool. It's cool. It's it's fine. Yeah, I mean, but anyway, we're, we'll move on from. From, we'll move on to better days. Uh, Ty, I know you were going to pull some questions. Steven, I had a question from chat, actually. Uh, I th- I, Camoon January is asking um, about those Rick Pitino condition practices. And what were those like? Getting into getting into shape and the conditioning. So, oh my gosh. Like, it's <laughs> so I've been to multiple practices for outside of Coach Pitino, and I'm like laughing. I'm like, these guys have no idea. Oh. Um, I mean, just the buildup. I will say this though, Coach Patino had um, towards my junior, senior, and my fifth year, he lightened up. But partly it's because we knew what we were doing. We ran, we knew how to run the system. But also, he. I mean, he. I mean, we're talking three, eight, four hour practices of, and usually thirty to forty five minute pressing ses- segments. Like, and people don't realize pressing. I mean, pressing segments. Yes, you're running the whole time. I mean, it's it's no joke and. To get in that type of shape, I still, I mean, heck, it, it's, it's almost, I, mean, I wish I could be back in that shape, but um, to get there, I mean, it literally was, it's a grind. I mean, you knew, you knew, I mean, heck, heck even uh, right before we tip off for like red, white scrimmage, like none of us are in the shape that we should be in. It's still, it's always a learning curve or conditioning curve, I should say, like between that two week period before we actually start playing games, because we're really balls to the wall at that point. But yeah, I, I, it's I, it's nothing like it. I mean, it's it's tough. I mean, for any big man, we used to run. We had used to, have to run a mile, like under. I want to say it was under, uh, like seven. Oh, definitely under seven thirty. I don't. And then like guards were definitely have to be like at seven minutes. I think something ridiculous. Wow, I think that's right. But yeah. it was it was rough. I mean, it. A lot of. I mean, not everyone could do it. I mean, you knew you knew the guys yeah. that were willing to do it and. If you weren't in conditioning shape, you were going to be on the treadmill till you were in conditioning shape. Yeah, yeah. I I, I listened to a recent podcast that had Donovan Mitchell on yeah. the podcast, and he said he would fall off the treadmill on purpose just so he could get a break or something like that. So, <laughs> well, so and he he when he when he had that interview too, like I I was laughing because I had a lot of people send it to me. One thing he didn't mention, or I can't recall if he did, but like. If you messed up, like he's sending you to the treadmill, you're on level 10 running for at least 60 seconds. As soon as you're off that treadmill, if you don't sprint back into practice, you're back on the treadmill. So <laughs> it was like you're not – and like so picture like you're doing full court press. Your mind is all jibber-jabber because you're, mm-hmm. you're trying to figure out where to go and you're just so tired. And, and then you screw up, you're on the treadmill. And if you don't sprint back and then you're like back into the chaos again. Like that's how he, that's how he prepared you. I mean – it was controlled chaos, and that's why, you know, if you remember our 13 team, around the 13-minute mark in the second half, we were bit, getting ready to go on our run. Like, you know, that's why we were calling the, the boom boom. Boom, you boomed them. Yeah. And uh, that's exactly – I mean, 
I always, when I was on the bench in the second half, I was like, we're about to, these guys are about to be dead. Like our, their legs would go shot at 13 mm-hmm. minute mark. So I, I've watched during 2020, I watched almost all our games over because there was nothing else to watch. And uh, that was more enjoyable to just kind of revisit everything. Yeah, I'm sure. And I'm sure all that conditioning was, was just as much mental as it was physical to mentally prepare you guys. One thing coach always said to us is you guys like that's, it was a mental game. He goes, you guys are the, you guys are in better shape than anyone in the country. Like that was something he always like imprinted in our brains. And so Mm -hmm. I think that helped us get over the edge on people thinking that we're going to run them into the dirt. And uh, I mean, I mean, obviously we, we were press and we love the press. I mean, all our guys, we were itching to do all that every time we had the opportunity. So they, there was somebody in the chat that asked what it was like getting recruited by Patino and does he handle it and how is it different from other coaches that recruited you? Well, Richard Patino recruited me. Walter McCarty were my two main recruits for Louisville. Um, and then it's funny, I was talking about this the other day with my dad, like when I committed. Um, so I went to Lawrence North High School and mm. – I guess Coach Patino was in some other state, but he called my dad. He was like, hey, like, will you be at Open Gym? We're going to come fly in for, to some C season. So he took a private plane, flew into Fishers, Indiana, and then drove over to my high school. And, I mean, that's impressive. In my, you know, I'm a high school. And I'm like, this guy's flying in to see me. Yeah. And, uh, and it's Rick Patino, you know. And, um, I mean, I, I followed sports heavily as a kid. I was a big IU fan. I always wanted to go to IU. Um, I don't think that's a secret for a lot of people that know me. And, uh, but I'm so glad and th- thankful I ran into Coach Patino and just, I mean, Coach Patino basically told me how he thought I'd play at Louisville. Now, do I think I, I think I was sold not to be, a, he didn't tell me I was going to be a role player my whole time, whole time I was there, but that's fine. Um, but, <laughs> but that's part of it. I mean, is it, as any kid that's, you know, if you're in the top, whatever, 100, you have to know, like, you're not going to – you can't be the man on every team. And sometimes you just fall into a role, and that's how you play, um, at least if you want to win in college, in my opinion. you got to be a part of your team. you got to know your role. Mm-hmm. And – but basically, ultimately, the way Coach Patino was different, I mean, you kind of already knew his status. I mean, I hate to say it like that. I mean, when he walks in the room, I mean, you just feel that energy. You feel the – I mean, he's just – he's that guy. I don't know how else to say that. And – uh Ultimately, when I met Coach Patino officially, really in person, and got real more uh, one-on-one talk with him, that that's what sold me on him. Outside of the other coaches, I mean, I had a lot of coaches. Heck, heck, when Calvin Sampson came and he was super aggressive, he wanted me to commit on the spot. Um, mm-hmm. But that's when he first got the IU. He wanted to get an Indiana kid, but I was like not ready to commit at that time. I was a sophomore in high school. Um, I'm trying to think about a lot of the other coaches were. I mean, they're aggressive, but, I mean, not a lot of them are Coach Patino and have that history. Um, and also, for me, being two hours from my hometown was pretty close, so that was another big yeah. factor why I chose Louisville. Steven, um, first off, I just want to thank you for coming on tonight. Like, this has been awesome, and yeah. and thank you so much for taking your time. Now, I, we, always end, we always end our – uh, interviews with special guests with one final question. I mean, you've you've done so much in your career. You've played, you know, <laughs> high level college basketball. You've played professionally. Um, now you do real estate. You've done so many cool things. But nothing's going to be more important than this question here. What are your thoughts on raising Kane's chicken tenders? Ooh, uh, I'm not, I'm going to throw some people off here if I say they're good or bad here. Um, I like raising Kane's chicken tenders um their sauce is fire to me is that a bad thing i mean and they're fried <laughs> no this is a great thing this is music to my ears steven it's I, great this is... great hungover, hungover food if, that, if i'm being honest yeah I, yeah I, oh yeah yeah I, a, you know, so. when, when ty dies his heaven is a raising canes so mm-hmm. you just made his day man just bury me in the cane sauce and i'm in Hey, I just this is a big wanna... point of uh, of argument in our group chat. So it's, it's always one of the questions we have to ask. That's funny. Well, <laughs> I didn't I didn't say this or say much, but I did. Again, I met I was with Coach Kelsey on Tuesday. I think mm-hmm. he's awesome. I can't wait for Louisville basketball this year. He's already yes. He's rocking and rolling right now. He's head to the grindstone trying to get recruits and uh, 
he definitely, I think he sees the big picture and he understands the job that's in place. And uh, I can't, I'm more, more than excited. I mean, I can't really, this is the most I've been excited about Louisville basketball. And I'm not even part of the program. I mean, outside of obviously being an ex alumni, but if I, it's a, it's a, it's going to be a special program again here soon. Well, yeah. you're, you're always going to be part of the program, man. Yeah. Stephen, you're, you're always, always welcome to come on anytime. And before yes. you take off, uh, give our viewers, uh, if they're interested in, uh, your real estate services or anything, how can they get in touch with you uh, and, and that kind of kind of thing? Just promote what you're doing right now and let them know how uh, they can do business with you. No, I appreciate that. Um, so me and my wife work together. Lara, Lara Protenic is her. Well, she says still hasn't taken my last name, but that's not a sore subject by any means. But <laughs> it's fun. But anyways, Lara, Lara's from Louisville. And uh, so me and my wife work together, Lara, and she um, – I guess I'm trying to say how should I, basically you can contact us either via Facebook or Instagram would probably be the easiest. All our contact information on them on both pages. It's probably the easiest to get a hold of us. But um, yeah, if you're looking to buy or sell, we're here. Um, it is a, it's getting ready to be a hot market. Um, things are heating up, low inventory across the board. So if you are a seller thinking about doing it, just come talk to us. Nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Steve, I'm, I'm actually, I'm friends with your wife on Facebook because that, think she was friends with a girlfriend I had in high school and I, I you know when I'm scrolling sometimes I, I see your kiddo and man he he's about as big as my four-year-old so I think we might have a, a future cardinal there maybe I'm praying I mean obviously as a ex-player and just a dad in general with a boy like you wanted to follow kind of your footsteps but um he's he's been pretty gifted with the the motor skills and all the fun stuff and yes he's in the 99 percent tile style and everything wow. uh you'll you'll laugh at this uh you know I was, coach kelsey asked me he goes how he goes how old is your kid and i said 18 months and i go he's actually as tall as you right now coach and he goes well <laughs> he's got it he, he's got he's already got a scholarship to louisville you can tell him that is what he said there so, you go I know I'm p putting it out there on the internet now, but uh, I was laughing. I was like, well, coach, you know, I'm going to hold that to you now. So uh, verbal contract, man. I, I told Laura, I was like, we don't have to save for college anymore. So we're good. So that's go. awesome. And then whenever he plays here, we'll get him a Canes NIL deal. It'll be perfect. dude. It's, that's, it's perfect. I didn't want to, I didn't want to bring up NIL. Cause I, I told coach, that's why I told coach Kelsey. I was like, I need that NIL first before we, <laughs> before we commit to anything. <laughs> I, it's hey, okay to be a parent that hustles in, in today as a college basketball. <laughs> it's it's I love the NIL and I was always and when I was in school I was pushing for kids. I mean obviously I was the, I was pushing for us to get paid. I'm so happy it's finally here. Yeah. Um, I don't. I have so many conversations about it every day with so many different people. I hope they. I know they're going to probably put some type of regulation on it. At, I think, but. I, I'm just so happy that the guys are finally able to get paid. So likewise. Yeah. Agree with you. All right. Well, Stephen well, Van Trees, 2013 yeah, go, national champion. Go cards. I appreciate y'all getting me on anytime. Just let me know. I, I enjoyed this. So All thank right. you, Steven. Well, we enjoyed it as well, this man. Was, thank you so much. Awesome. So fun. Yeah, thank, thank you, Stephen. Appreciate All you. Right. Y'all have a good night. Me too, you man. too, man. Bye -bye. Dude, how cool is that? That's so fun. Oh, I love hearing all the yeah, that, stories, man. That was cool as heck. Oh, Good man. memories, man. Great memories. You know, there's, there's thanks cool. Stephen for joining us tonight. And I have to apologize to our viewers. I, I know if you guys might have been hearing like some crazy background noise. I've been on mute almost the whole show because of it. Um, I decided to come up and visit my folks. Uh, oh, you know, this evening, and I'm doing the pod from a, a different location and. They've got a little bit of remodeling going on, and they're still in the kitchen remodeling the kitchen, and I'm down in their basement. But you can hear all the hammering and everything else, so I've tried to stay on mute as much as possible. But if that's been kind of annoying, I apologize to everybody. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, I, it it has been awesome being on this podcast. You know, we get to sit here and we get to talk. U of L sports and we've all become great friends, but you know, it is the, the treat of it all is to get to sit down with a former player, a former national championship player um, and kind of shoot the shit. So it's, yeah. you know, I, I don't know. It's pretty special, man. It's, it's, it's very cool. So yeah, I, I really I, appreciate SVT coming 
and, and spending a good 20 minutes with us. That was awesome. Oh, I mean, it's 30. I mean, that was, that was so cool. Like I, I never thought, I never thought in a million years that when we started this, like one day we would be on here with, you know, a couple hundred people and, and getting to talk to Steven Van Trees or, you know, some of the people that we've talked to and, I can't thank Steven enough for coming on tonight. That was so cool. One of my, was cool. one of my, and that's definitely one of my favorite memories of our podcast. It might be actually my favorite. It's, it's, it's up there. That's so cool. Well, and the hard part is like, uh, it, it's always like, well, do we need to wrap up with our guests and we're not taking up too much of their time or are they just enjoying hanging out? So that's always yeah, I, a little I, bit of a, a conundrum I, for us. I think at the end he was enjoying it, man. He was, hanging, he was, he was in. So that's just, it's so cool. And, um, yeah, that, I'm going to talk about that one for a while. I'm going to brag about that with my family for a minute. Yeah, that was cool. I I can't say enough how how thankful I am that Stephen came on, and he was he was a great guest. Honestly, it was probably my favorite guest that I've been a part of on this show. So he did a really good job. And I mean, my goodness, I never. I guess if you would have told me a year ago when we started doing this that we'd be interviewing people from the national championship team, and if you would have told me in 2013 somebody from the future would have been like, Hey man, you're going to have them on your show. I'll be like, what show? Like you're all, you're all, you're going to have a show with a bunch of guys and you guys are all going to be getting these guests on and you're going to have some, uh, you're going to have one of these guys on, you're going to have Steven Van Trees. It's just cool to think about it when you put it in perspective like that. I mean, hell we've been doing this, what a year, a little over a year maybe. And, uh, it's a lot of fun, man. I never thought we'd be in a position this fast to be able to bring people on like that. And we just appreciate him having the time to do it. And he, he answered questions so well. So, right. Well, and he's, he, he's one of those players, like you said, Kyle, that as a fan, you, you grow to love. Cause he's that glue guy. He's, he's the guy that's going to get in there and do the dirty work. He, yep. you know, and, and, and the stories tonight that he told kind of even, highlight that more and, and you know the the fact that you know he wasn't going to be on the national championship team but got that text and stuff like that that make it, it, it endears a guy like that to you even more than uh, before so uh, yeah I'm, I'm glad we got to hear some of that stuff um yeah and it, it was a really cool interview and 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 he was laid back he told you know some cool stories that probably are um, unique stories you won't hear elsewhere and stuff like that. So it, I thought it was an awesome, awesome interview um, or guest. Yeah, it, it was great. Oh, wow. Couch House, who's been on here since before we even thought about making a show, he was waiting in the YouTube section of the <laughs> of the viewers, said that this is his favorite episode so far. Well, Couch House, do I have news for you? It's just now beginning. Because Ty is going to unravel a game. Now, let, let's explain it for everybody. Ty, what yeah. are we getting into here? Yeah, let's get into our game. So it's game night, baby. This is something that people have probably played as a drinking game or things like that. But we're going to play it uh, with Louisville Sports. So it's called Bullshit. Um, I have a wheel here. I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. Let me find it. All Louisville questions, by the way, people. So if you want to play along. Play along. All right. So we got our wheel here. It's going to have 10 different topics on here. And then, Ash, I'm going to move me over here if you don't mind. This is going to be the order we're going to go in. So we're going to spin this wheel. Uh, it's going to have 10 topics. By thank, way, you Desmond. thank you, Desmond. Thank you, Desmond. We appreciate you, brother. Um, it's going to land on a topic. So you see some of them, like a 1,000-point score, for example. Um, Ash is going to go first. He'll have to name a thousand point score. So he's going to say, for example, uh, Ronnie Williams. Carol... <laughs> yeah. And then it's going to be up to Kyle to either call bullshit on that if he doesn't think he scored a thousand or say another name. Um, the first round, we're going to take it a little slower. I'm not going to be super uh, hard on time, but after that, it's going to be rapid fire. I'm going to give you a 10 second shot clock. You got to start naming them. Um, so it's going to be fun. It's going to be comedy, I think. There's 10 topics, so in theory, I think we should be able to give out five points. Because let's say Ash gets eliminated in this first one. It's going to be down to Patrick and Kyle, and then we'll we'll keep going. So 
Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to spin the wheel. Ash, this is your first topic you're going to go first on, okay? Well, that takes a long time. Picks. NFL draft pick. So any anybody from U of L that was drafted to the NFL. Lamar Jackson. Jair Alexander. Teddy Bridgewater. Tom Jackson. Arnold Jackson. Devontae Parker. Zeke Parker. Dion Branch. Dave Ragone. Uh-oh. Ash is on mute. Uh, Chris Redman. That was mine. Uh, Bobby LaFue. Uh, Jeff Brom. Travis LaFue. Bullshit. <laughs> All right. We're calling bullshit on Travis LaFew. I'm going to be honest. I don't even know who that is. The LaFew <laughs> brothers definitely played, and they were both very good, but I can't remember if Travis <laughs> Honestly, Honestly, I was hoping Pat would call bullshit on my first LaFew because I'm not sure he made it. They were both good they players. They were from like Dan. Well, that's, if I remember. That's, why I, that's why I paused. I was like, <laughs> hmm. I pause too because I'm afraid that it's like that. Those are the type of players that you really they're on the they're on the edge. If they got drafted, it was like late, but they yeah. are good enough to where you can question it and think, so, well, maybe they did. Travis LaFew, we're talking about the offensive linemen. Mm -hmm. They were both offensive linemen from Dan. I believe I they were who, who, said, who said who said who said Travis LaFew? Ash did, uh, yeah, what? and Kyle called bullshit, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm looking here, Travis LaFew. This is from Wikipedia. So, is a former American offensive lineman. He was signed by the Chicago Bears as an undrafted. Oh, free so he agent. didn't get drafted. Yes. Undrafted free. Yes. Agent. Oh, he made me nervous. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the only reason I said good. Travis was because you said Bobby. So it reminded me of Travis. I don't even think Bobby got Bobby, but I didn't get called on bullshit. The moment it. I heard LaFew, I'm calling bullshit because I've never heard of them in my life. They played under good. They were good time. They, they were, were really good, good players. Yeah, I just saw yeah. the time. I was like, I, I still don't remember them. Some, but of these, some of these old heads in here will tell you that. The that's Lafayette about when I started them. watching, like, 05, 06. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure they played. They were from Danville, Kentucky. Some of these old heads in here will tell you. The Lafayette, the Lafayette brothers were good. That's back when well, I used to follow recruiting daily, like, refresh, refresh, refresh on the message. Well, he, he played for a few teams on here. Like, he, he got signed, practice squad and stuff. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Good I team. Know that. Or a good, good player. All right. So, Ash, you can sit this one out. You're eliminated for the moment. Now, you will be back, but after this one. So, we're going to spin again. Kyle's going to go first here. It's going to be strictly Pat and Kyle. So, at this point, guys, now that we have a, an idea, mm -hmm. rapid fire. We're going 10 seconds. All right. I feel like we had pretty good last time. Oh, man. Now, this is going to be good. So, oh, I put no. this in. I really put this in almost for Ash. And oh, before no. I get it. I don't watch baseball. So you have to name Major League Baseball players who played at U of L. Do they have oh, to be current? Oh, no. I'm going to cheat. No, no, no. So here's the caveat because I can't name many. Just, just has to have played in a game. Okay. That means, you know, taking a bat, like in the box score. And I have a specific website that I'm going to use for this. Like they keep track of box scores. I'm dead. I'm Hopefully dead. you're using baseball reference. Uh, yeah, I believe I'm this is uh, baseball almanac. But anyways, yeah, turn chat off if you have that off but or have it on. So yeah. Major League Baseball players that played at U of L. Kyle, go first. Will Smith. Adam Duvall. McKay. Don't ask me his first name. Reed Detmers. Pee Wee Reeves. <laughs> Bullshit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is. <laughs> I don't know. Anything about... I don't want... <laughs> Why Do I even need to bother checking there, Pee Wee Reeves? Come on, man. Jack Green. Need... Okay. So, for Bobby what it's Miller. worth. Uh, Ash is probably going to be a better resource than this, but I don't see him on my uh, Louisville baseball alumni. So he didn't have anybody until like 2006 or something. Oh, so, man. Yeah. 
Well, I knew Pee Wee Reese yeah. from Louisville. I knew you. Yeah, there actually was one back in the 30s, but it it goes from 1931 to 2006. That's how he far actually, away it was. He actually might not be from Louisville. I don't know why I thought. I have a signed Pee Wee Reese bat. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So, <laughs> Babe Ruth. I mean, I don't know. I just, I don't watch baseball, man. This is not my thing. All right. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to keep score on my phone here. So I'm Pat, just glad I do two one. of them. All right. Yeah. I put that in for Ash, hoping he could really, you know. You can't do That's bias now. Come on, Listen, man. I, put, I, I have to give Ash a little help, okay? Ash has been busy, oh, you know. Like, a bone. I, Come on, guys. Yeah, yeah, I'm throwing him a bone. So, oh, all man. right, Patrick, you're going to go first here. You're up one to nothing <laughs> on everybody. I'm going to spin the wheel. Oh, What's this category? Pee, Pee Wee Reese is an all-timer. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this is return a, a punt return for a touchdown at U of L. Um, fuck, man. Uh, Jair Alexander, Zeke Parker, Arnold Jackson. Bullshit. <laughs> okay, we're calling bullshit on. I don't think Arnold Jackson. Jackson was a returner, was he? Yeah, he was. Watch it. It's it's coming. Gotta go to the tape. Let me, what does the me scouting report this. say, Arnold, Ty? Arnold Jackson returned a punt for a touchdown. It might take a second to Google it. So God, I hope this isn't COVID brain. I really think he did. He was a returner. I do Because I thought Arnold Jackson and Zeke Parker played at the same time. They Zeke did, was but, an elite but Zeke returner. Parker was a kickoff returner, but I'm scared to death that maybe he returned like one random punt, Ash. That's the only reason I didn't call bullshit. He was a kick returner mainly, though. He was elite too as a return man. He was, and he definitely had kick returns for touchdowns. And that was like all he did because he wasn't a very good wide receiver. Actually, that's the thing. Are we able to prove? Uh, that's that's where it gets hard. Like, yeah. how are you gonna go all the way back to Arnold Jackson and prove he did not? And, and I'm blanking on who had the blackout game punt return. Well, let's just Google Arnold Jackson punt return. Yeah, I'm working on it right now. I'm trying to get. Uh, and we need we need Kelly Dickey on here. That is true. He would just know. He'd Kelly like, Dickey. All right. So I have punt, I have punt returns. You said Arnold Jackson. Is that what we're calling bullshit That's on? What he said, yeah. yeah. Arnold Jackson has one punt return for a touchdown. There you go. One. Kyle I remember it. One. I remember it. All right. So it was electrifying. Oh, I a, am I up or is it still? Or is it still who, who, said, who said Arnold Jackson? I said Arnold Jackson. Okay. Pat, Pat, bullshit. I called bullshit. Okay. So, Pat, you're out for just a moment. You can come back here in a second. This is going to be down to Ash and Kyle. It better not be baseball. Or I'm just are we still on this topic? Or are we going to I will no, log we're just, off we're for the night again. Baseball, we're going to spin again. Ash will beat me into oblivion. There's no baseball. more baseball. No more baseball. All right, so we have – It's me, Robbie. Scored, it scored 20 points in a single game. So, in anybody basketball? in the history of Louisville basketball has scored 20 points in a single game? DeJuan Wheat. Uh, Francisco Garcia. Purvis Ellison. Taekwon Dean. Jerome Harmon. Juan Palacios. <laughs> <laughs> it's going on the same team. Felton Spencer. <laughs> Terrence Williams. T. Will. Kenny Payne. Uh oh, Kyle. <laughs> Hey, we got a, a bullshit. Six. We're calling bullshit on Kenny Payne. Uh, Kenny Payne definitely scored 20, 20 points. points. Did he? Right. I, know he was I mean, he was a first round draft pick. I'm just guessing that he did. So let's did go check that out. He was he drafted probably, like 16th overall. So it's not like he was a scrub. He probably did. Let's go check it out. See, I knew he was an NBA, but that. for some reason, I felt like he came off the bench. Was he a, he wasn't a starter, was he? He's a good player. I'm not saying anything disrespectful. Yeah, he was a starter for sure on the 89 team. Uh, well, then I'm probably wrong. Him, right. Tony Kimbrough, Purvis, LeBradford Smith. Um, He probably did. I mean, he only takes one game. That's actually a hard one to really. It would take forever for us to disprove I mean, one I of those two like because, like. Aiden McCool. And then you'd be like, oh, well, you know. <laughs> Aiden McCool. Robbie Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, uh, Gilmore, see nice to see you in here, man. It's going to be a little difficult to find this, to be honest. Here, I'll, I'll try Kenny, to. What about Kenny Payne, career high? Louisville. Yeah, yeah that could disparate it right there immediately if you can find his career high. It's giving me his NBA stats. He scored 20 in an NBA game, so I'm going to say odds are. No, 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 no. Because a lot of people we're really score trying more. to look. A lot of people score more in the NBA, but there's eight extra minutes for one. Eight extra minutes. There is. It's 48 minutes. I know there is, but he. I mean, I could probably just go game NBA. logs, right? Let's just go the game same. logs. But there's a lot more games. It's like you can, you can like 82 games, 20, 48 I mean, minutes. He, he averaged 14.5 his senior year, so you'd have to think. Oh come on, man. Well, maybe he just got 14 and a half points every game. <laughs> exactly 14 and a half. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Maybe. All right. I'm probably wrong. I'll just take the. I out. mean, I I want to try to find it, and I, but you know, and it's old, just hard. Can to, we, Kenny Payne, career high. Little. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I've Googled that. I'm, I'm not really. It's not coming up. Gosh, Dan, we do need Kelly Dickey to, to really get answers. I know. Kelly Dickey should be on here. We, we, we should have done that. I ain't going to lie. Or 1,000. Wow. He's a thousand. I actually points. did send him an email one time asking him to be a guest, and he never replied. Kelly, yeah. Oh, uh, well, all right. I, I don't know. I don't see anything. So he scored. I, I can find I can find game logs for NCAA tournament games. Yeah, that's what I'm finding. And the highest he scored in in, in an NCAA tournament game is 19 points. No! But that's NCAA tournament. I can't, do you just want to keep going? I don't feel like we can answer. Oh, I, I am almost sure the man has scored. Are you going to take the L on this one? No, no. Like, can we just keep going? We can't prove it. Chat, uh, this is – this is we need to go to chat on this. What do you all think? Phone a friend. I mean, nineteen. That's or, crazy that I can't that we cannot right. find that. What is his? What was uh? What was his last year? Nineteen eighty nine. Eighty nine. Yeah. yeah. Eighty eight. Eighty nine season. They lost. Well, we don't want to take too to long. Is my point. Like we don't yeah. want to be sitting here like all night trying to figure out if this is. I mean, technically, you can average fourteen and a half and never score twenty. Seems kind of crazy, but. I just I can't believe that like I'm looking at like sportsreference.com and like they just don't have that. It's insane to me. He averaged 14 and a half, Jason, but I mean he probably got 20. But if you can't find it, you can't find it. That's wild that we cannot find that. <sighs> the problem is if we run into this again with like an older player, we might have the same. Well, the good thing is is that this topic will be done. So you know, so do we I didn't really keep... think I didn't think about the possibility of not being able to find if a player scored 20 or not. I was like, oh, that sounds like a good topic. We could go for a minute. So, all right. We just keep going. Screwed it up by pulling a player from the 80s. Yeah, we really do. All your players are from the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> OK, no, so let's, wheat, wasn't it? let's just do this. That's I'm going to make it. I'm going to make an executive decision. Who? Okay. Yeah, Desmond pain. says. Uh, Desmond says he balled out against pain. UNLV. That game was awesome. That was one of my favorite can, early can memories. Can we just make a new kid. topic and, and and redo it? Um, I mean, yeah, but we we won't have enough topics for point wise. Uh, but... Robbie, is he watching? If he's watching, tell Kelly we will give him the link and he can come on here and and let us know the All answer. Right. Desmond said Kenny Payne balled out, so let's just put Kenny Payne versus UNLV. That's okay. That's good. I'm almost sure he scored 20. In I'm sure he did, but I'm not going to give it up until I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm here to win, damn it. <laughs> That's funny. I should get my point. Oh, all these are about Kenny Payne getting fired yeah, for only dude, winning 12 oh games. Oh, my God. Who's, Kyle, you said Kenny Payne, bro. No, I said it. I said Kenny Payne. And, and he said bullshit. Yeah, and Kyle called bullshit. Oh my God! I hate you all. I don't think <laughs> my team paint ever going against you at LV. Okay, We're here's done. what's gonna happen. We're done. For the sake of time, I'm making an executive decision. Ashig, Kenny Payne, Kyle called bullshit. I'm giving the point to Kyle because we cannot prove. 
Yeah, but come on. The light well, Oh, is no. Well, yeah. He's, 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 he's find it. Nobody can find it. Look at him. Like, they're like, look. Somebody and, said, and I'm going to keep looking. Game. Okay. I'm making. Draft pick. Kelly Dick doesn't making, even know. I am making the executive decision. I am sorry. I did not foresee this oh, being a problem. I don't agree with that. <laughs> I'm getting screwed here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're moving on. We're moving There's on. There's no way a man that averaged 14.5 points a game did it. Is yeah, yeah, possible, Pat. Pat. It Pat, is mathematically possible, Pat. It is mathematically possible. We can't find a single game. Nobody We've been can. looking for 15 minutes, and we can't see if he scored 20 or more. Fuck you, Kay. All right, all right, all right. I said we don't get any points, and we just go and start over. I can't believe that I automatically lost a point there. But then we're out of we're out of topics. Can we get well, a half can, point? We can do a topic agree, again. Marcus. How about a half point each? <laughs> I agree. That is or a half shit. point each is fine. Okay, you want to do half? You want to do half? Is that okay? Half point each. Half okay, that'll work. That's fine. Half-sies. That's about as fair as we can get. Since we can't. All right. All right. <laughs> well, yeah, wow. I hope that... the rest of the game has more clarity. Ty is slipping up the names. On... Yeah, that's true. That is true. All right. I really did not foresee that being a problem, but of course, we found a way. We found a way. Somebody All right. had to mention our former coach. <laughs> I was like thinking about saying him like two or three picks <laughs> earlier, and I kept chuckling a little bit. Okay, there's no way we can get this wrong. I know for a fact. 100 oh. plus career receptions. I, our ass goes first. Arnold Jackson. Dion Branch. Devontae Parker. Um, Mario Urudia. 2-2 Atwell. Um, Harry Douglas. Deion Branch. He's already Deion Branch said. was already said. You're oh, out. I didn't shoot. Damn it. You oh. are out. You are That's out, awesome. Ash. Unfortunate. Deion Branch was already said. But it was a good one. Um, all right, we're moving on. Ash, you're out for the moment. It's down to Kyle and Pat. We're going to spin again. No baseball. There is no baseball. I promise. That'll kill me in women's basketball, too. We know. have 15-plus career rushing touchdowns. Kyle, go. Right. Michael Bush. Eric Shelton. Oh, that was my Lenny Lyles. Lamar Jackson. Oh. Um, Lionel Gates, Frank Monroe. It's Morrow, not Monroe. Monroe, J- Javion Hawkins. Bullshit. Calling bullshit on Javion Hawkins. All right. Yeah, he may not have. He may not have played long enough. Let's see. He got enough carries. Fifteen pretty, plus career touchdown. I think he was, but we're gonna we're gonna look it up. Hila Moore Bay says Ralph Dawkins. Robbie also says Ralph Dawkins. Robbie says Anthony Cummings. I even put it on the screen. Ralph, that was who I was trying to think of. There was an old head that was really good. Besides who I already <laughs> said, and it was All Ralph. Right. Javi and Hawkins. Leroy Collins. That'd be another good old one. Javian Hawkins in 2019 had nine rushing touchdowns. Oh no! In 2020, he had seven. That makes oh, 16. Ooh, 16 the baby. Point goes to Kyle. The circle gets ooh, the square. Ooh. So Pat has one. Thank you, Kyle Javian Hawkins. One Coming and a half. That one and a half is going to come in clutch. I already know. Hey, I do have to say, Ty, this is a good game. I, this is I, good. This it is was probably my favorite. It was good until the Kenny Payne fiasco. <laughs> was, well, just like hey, you opened the door Payne. for it, Ty. You I did. It. I really did. We are moving on from Kenny Payne twice. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it up to us to to do that. I thought there was no possible way we could mess this up. All right, so everybody's back in. Everybody's back in. We got four more topics left. I thought for sure when you said you were making the executive decision, you were going to give me the point. Well, half point is that work? Half point's fair. Uh, okay, bowl game appearances. So you have to name a bowl game that we have played in. Oh, okay. Uh, Ash, go first. 
The Liberty Bowl. Fiesta Bowl. Sugar Bowl. Orange Bowl. Humanitarian Bowl. Oh, that's a good one. The Russell Athletic Bowl. Uh, the Pinstripe Bowl. Military Bowl. Ooh, yeah, we did play in that, didn't we? Um, the Belk Bowl. The Motor City Bowl. GMAC Bowl. Well, Music City, City Bowl. Um, the uh, Duke's Mayo Bowl. The Eight. Peach Bowl. What would you say? Peach Bowl. Oh. Bullshit. Seven. God, God, right, bullshit dang, on Peach dang, Bowl. Dang, 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 dang it. Calling bullshit on the Peach Bowl. Man. Yeah, I don't think we played in that. No, we didn't. I was just trying was to hurry up. SEC the clock. I know there's going to be a bunch of bowl games I missed in my head, but at the time, I need to. It was getting thin, though, because you go to the same ones a lot. Yeah. All right, so we said the Peach Bowl, Sugar Bowl right? was mentioned. I I'm think. not seeing the Peach Bowl. I see the Citrus no, Bowl. we didn't play in it. I don't think anybody mentioned the Gator Bowl. Did anybody say the Gator no, Bowl? The Gator, Gator Bowl. Bowl. Man. There was a couple other good ones in here. The beef. Did we say Beef O'Brady's against Southern Miss? I don't think so. I forgot about Beef O'Brady's against Southern Miss. Oh, and the Man. Sun Bowl. Didn't we play in the Sun Bowl? One Somebody one? said Sugar could, Bowl. I thought. How Maybe anybody they forget? How could anybody forget the first responder bowl against Air Force? <laughs> That's actually the mill. That was the one I was thinking of. So I might have been wrong again. Um, we get that I think is the same thing. thing as the you know what? Game. I think we did. Like I think in my head, like you all went sugar. I said Fiesta. Somebody said. Did I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty. Robbie, sure. he that, said that. that Robbie, uh, Kyle said that. He said the humanitarian bowl, which was the Boise Bowl. Yeah, yeah. So Ch Chester uh, Ash did say the Sugar Bowl. Okay. I remember that now. All right. So refresh me. Who who said the Peach Bowl? I did. Kyle. I was okay. Right. So, I'm out. Kyle, so Kyle is out. We're down to Ash and Patrick. We're gonna spin. Oh man, we might be here for a minute, boys. Thousand point scores. Oh yeah. Thousand point scores. Patrick, you're up first. Daryl Griffith. What? <laughs> oh, you don't you dare do this shit. What'd he say? He said Kenny Payne. Oh, I'm not gonna call bullshit. Dewam we don't. Tony Williams. I can't hear him. What did he Tony say? Tony Williams. Tony Williams. Purvis Ellison. Uh, Felton Spencer. Derek Smith. The Bradford Smith. Montrez Harrell. Francisco Garcia. Butch Beard. <laughs> Phil Bond. Dwayne Morton. Greg Miner. Edgar Sosa. Bullshit. Call him bullshit on Edgar Sosa. Ooh, I think I think that he might be probably, close, actually. I think didn't I mean, he play all four year guy? Years? Ooh, yeah, he definitely you got yeah. that one, Pat. I probably I messed that up. Just Google Edgar Sosa stats. We'll see here. He actually held a bucket at times. He had his up and down moments for sure, but that Boy, game against Texas A&M in the tournament, man. And he had the UK year. game. Not just that. The Jagger is one that he will always be loved for. Even, like, that whole game. That's why he took that shot. Because that whole game, he was just on fire. So, I'm going to double check this. But I'm just going to say, I'm looking at sportsreference.com. Edgar scored, according to them, 1,363. Yeah, yeah he, he easily cleared it. That's my So, bad. I'm going to... Go check here. No, I, I I take the L. That's my fault for I shouldn't have called that. So now Eggers, yeah, Eggers is actually the twenty seventh all time leading scorer. He cleared that pretty easily. Yeah, he cleared yeah, it pretty easily. That was easy. What's the score? Well, who said Edgar there? I'm sorry, I, I lose track when I'm checking stuff. Pat said Edgar. Pat said it, and I called BS. So I'm okay, out. so Pat gets the point. <clears throat> 
So Pat is now at two. Kyle is still one and a half. And Ash is half a point. <laughs> Going into our final point available. So, uh oh. So whoever gets this wins. It's pretty much between Kyle and Pat at this point. All right, another one. We could be here for a minute. NBA first round picks. Then we just Am I in this still? You're in. Everybody's in here right now. Yes, we're all I back. We Everybody's up first. Uh, Kyle's up first. All right. Are we, are we ready? Yes. Okay. Reese Gaines. Donovan Mitchell. Kenny Payne. Oh, my God. Yeah, okay. Uh, Dewan Wheat. Bullshit. Calling bullshit on Dewan. Yeah, Dewan was not DeJuan a first Wheat round pick. He was a second round pick. pick to the Grizzlies. Jeez, gosh. Dang it. It's because you said Kenny Payne. You, know <laughs> you got me off track. I could have said Samaki Walker. Yeah. I could have said Terry Rozier. I could have said all kind of dudes. DeJuan if Dewan would have played a, a decade later, he would have been a first round pick. pick. No, it was a second round Reese pick. Was Robbie in Ross. Ross Robbie, was a lottery pick. Robbie Reese, Reese was a lottery was, pick uh, for the Orlando like Magic. He went number 11 or 12. I don't remember. Yeah. I am yeah, wrong. Reese, about Reese was actually like the 16th pick by the Magic. I, I know that. Right, right, because I remember I fell asleep as a little kid and yep. I fell asleep because it was so late because Dewan didn't get picked and I found out the next day he went in the second round. Yeah, if he right. was, if he had played a decade later, he would have had a career because they would have given they, they weren't giving small guards like that a chance at that time. There's so many dudes I could have picked. I just like Dewan Weed. Man. So Gosh, let me man. ask you this: So Kyle, you said Dewan Weed and Pat called bullshit, right? So Pat, or I'm out. Yeah, and then Pat that so, means Pat wins because Ash so can't win. That's what I was going to ask. We can all go here and just not award a point because uh, Pat wins regardless. Yeah, do that. Yeah, let's do it. So What's y'all want to go? All three of yeah, us do it. All right, the last one is I can't read it upside down, but I'm pretty sure it's three thousand career passing yards. So, who goes first? Uh, let's see. Ash is going to go first. I'm so damn mad. Three thousand like career? Yeah. Yes. Chris three thousand career passing yards. Chris Redman. Lamar Jackson. Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, Stephon Kyle, are you, going? you said all of us go. Yeah, all of I us. know I know the answers. So, oh so I, yeah. who'd you say? Stefan LaFleurs. Brian Brom. Malik Cunningham. Dave Ragone. What are we saying? No? Okay. No. Uh Browning Nagel. Oh, I might call bullshit there because he transferred in. I think he only played one year. What? He We're transferred from West Virginia. What I get for trying to argue, talk about old stuff with an older head to me. Come on, man. I thought Brown it doesn't matter. We, I lost. There you go. Yeah, if he only played one year back in those days, he might not have. He may have played two, but he definitely transferred in from West Virginia. If he played two, so, I think he got it. This is, again, according to sportsreference.com. From, he played in 89 and 90. Does that sound sure. right? Yeah, because he was on the Fiesta Bowl team. In 1989, he threw for 2,500 yards. In 1990, he threw for 2,100. There you go. Uh, you got, he did you were right. Play. All right. So I was thinking he only years. played one season when I said bullshit, though. So, yeah. funny enough, I was actually looking this up last night, like that list of 3,000-yard passes. How many people are there? I think there's like 20 something, like 27, I thought, maybe. That's um, more than I would have thought. Actually, I don't know about that. I have to check. But my my point was the last one was Jack Plummer. So if I was to play, I would definitely have said Jack Plummer to try to bait out a bullshit from somebody. Bullshitter. Well, Malik, I was thinking about Jack Plummer. He was, Ty, he was my first one that was like, I was on the fence because I was like, he's right around 3,000. That's actually a good. Let me go look this up. I know for a fact I saw. Is Hunter Campwell on there? 
I'm gonna go look. Did he played one or two. That's years? another good one. Yeah, that would have been a good one. I think he played two. I didn't think he? I think he's played by he he played a whole year by himself. I think yeah he would have. Well, that that, that one year he played under Cragthorpe though, so that doesn't even count. Okay, it's sorry, it's not 27. It's 17. But Jack Plummer is the last one of the 17. He is at 3,204. And Hunter came in as a walk on. People forget that. No, so some yeah. names that you could have had, Hunter Cantwell, Benny yeah. Russell, Dean May, Browning Nagel, Jeff Brom, couple, couple Ed Rupert, there. Stephen LaForce. Ed Rupert. Ed Rupert, that was rough. Jay Gruden, Brian I Brom. I guess I don't know, but I always heard it was rough. I, I, Jeff Brom made me nervous because I was like, did he? I knew he was a really good quarterback, but – I knew so yeah, he was not a 3,000 yard guy. I knew he rode the pine for a while. So, well, and then we had a, he got hurt the one year where he was out the most of the season. Yeah. So at this point, now we have to recognize that Patrick is the winner of <sighs> bullshit games game in night. A row. He's on a row. Now, now we can't. We don't have to hear Kyle bragging about his two That's wins because right. I, I got two I have, never, never winner of bullshit. I have never bragged at all. I'm very humble in the fact that I'm the only person <laughs> right. in the history of human civilization to win Louisville Sports Jeopardy. I'm just, just, facts are facts. It's humility pointing out those facts. I'm the only person fun. to win bullshit, which which fits my personality. Which speaks for itself. <laughs> Think the name of it. That was that was fun. <laughs> I I like the game. I should have known the Dewan Wheat man. I, sh- I I can't believe I slipped up there because you have to make a quick answer. That's what it is. You have to yeah. think on your. You can't waste time. So we should we should have asked Stephen if he wanted to play this. That would have been fun, man. Oh, that would have been. Uh, well, yeah. probably would have said no. I was going to ask him until he said that he didn't know he was going to have company over. over. Yeah. 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 So I was like, all right, that's when I decided not to ask. I guarantee yeah. you would have fun with that one, though. He would have had fun. <laughs> he, I like that game. Did y'all see like him in the, the lobby laughing when y'all said, like, you use an example of 1,000 point score, and he said, and then you can either say something or you can call bullshit. It's so like y'all see the same trees, and he's literally sitting in the lobby laughing. <laughs> I can't see the lobby because I don't, I, you know, I, I don't yeah. have the same access as you all. Well, you know, you only have three, can't you? That's the only reason. You only have three people that but, have um, access. No, that was fun. I I think we could do that, that again. Fun. But I, I yeah, that worry, was a good one. I only worry about like how many Louisville centric topics we can really have, though. That's only my only thing. So if we do, yeah, I'd have to expand to like college sports. You know what I mean? But I thought it's pretty fun. Well, fun. around a big sports event, you you could use another theme, like you know, around the Super Bowl, you could use NFL theme or yeah, around, you know what I mean. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Was, I thought the funniest part was when the two non baseball boys got the baseball time. Oh, dude, I'm a baseball boy. Well, I love Pat, Pat, you are, but as soon as Kyle <laughs> spoke, I was out. Baseball, I was like, oh no. That would have been a good, that would have been a, a, a fun one with me and Ash. That would have been That's kind of what I did. Random people. You really could have been my way, but like you would have just taken me at my word there. You, I if I was playing, name. you could have said any name, and I would have just called bullshit because I wouldn't have known. So the one, and it's funny because like whenever Sean Green made it, even U of L made the announcement that he was the first major league player. First one, yeah, but then they've retroactively added that guy from the '30s recently because for a yeah. long time Sean Green was credited as being the first. Sean Green, Chad, Chad Green, Chad Green. Chad, 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 or is it Chad Green? Man. I'm, no, Sean Green's right too. Yeah, yeah. Sean Green was the guy that was because he played for the Mariners. I'm pretty sure, right? In like 05, 06, something like that. But he was credited as being the first for a long time, and then recently they've added that guy from the 30s, which I'm I'm skeptical about. Yeah, I think we had the most players on opening day roster on the opening day rosters of any college. Well, and over the last decade, we've had more guys make their major league debut than any other college. So. So somebody in the Trilly Donovan Discord reached out and said, like, as an Arkansas fan, they tagged me, and they were like, is this how you felt during the Louisville surge? Because I don't know if you all realize, but Arkansas has been whipping left and right on guys, and I, I was just like, man, I feel your pain. 
I mean, I think waiting. it worked out for us. I'm, I have all the faith in the world back, Kelsey, but we remember how we all felt when we kept missing. So what's up with people. them and uh, what's up with them and Chris Beard? I've I, all I've ever heard Not is happening. that he's the main guy. Not happening. And then they uh, were apparently Jerome Tang was a guy. I mean, I'm seeing now it's not happening. So they're kind of in the same boat where like, oh, well, if you, I think their thought was, well, we'll definitely get Chris Beer, but in a crazy circumstance, we don't. We got Jerome Tang sitting there and we'll get him. That was always the thought. And that was always what was circulating. It's kind of like how like, you know, Scott Drew's kind of a long shot, but if we don't land Scott Drew, Dusty May's taking the job. And then we know how that worked out. And so they're kind of where we were that night. We released the Dusty May pod, emergency pod, <laughs> big old emergency shit show pod, for lack of better terms. We were all yeah, frustrated. Man. That's how their fans are right now. So it's just funny that somebody mentioned that. So I don't, I don't know what they're going to do because I thought for sure they were going to get one of those two. And I don't know what's going on with Will Way, but it sounds like that's not going to happen for them either. That's nuts. It, it is interesting. I wonder who they turn to. Oh, I don't know. <clears throat> if he, hey, for anybody that didn't know, my, Eric Musselman is like Littlefinger off Game of Thrones. This is a this is I know this has nothing to do with Louisville, but this is an interesting story. I think anybody will find this interesting. So, so Mus was dying to get out of Arkansas. He was trying to crawl anywhere and everywhere where he really wanted to be, and if. You know, he was interested in this job from what people said, but he was really interested in get back out west. Well, UCLA didn't open with Mick Cronin, you know, his buyout's ironclad, and maybe he just wants to stay there. Well, so what does that leave? That leaves him looking at USC. So so I Einfeld or is it Enfield or Einfeld? I've never known how to say Andy it. Andy Enfield. Enfield. Andy yeah, Enfield yeah. was there, still the coach. And apparently, from my understanding, is Mus's sister was married to the biggest donor at SMU. This is a story. And so the, the biggest donor, he, his sister was getting in his ear. Mus was getting in her ear, I assume. Just saying, like, hey, we're interested in a job. Eric, Eric, Eric Musselman is interested in a job. So everybody wondered at the time when SMU's head coach got fired, why in the world did he get fired? Like, he was a pretty good coach. He had a decent record. I think he won like 21, 22 games or something. <laughs> well, next thing you know, they fire him. And so then and then it comes out that Eric Musselman was in, or his camp, is maybe his agent, I don't know, was reaching out to USC knowing that infield like was – had a fascination with the Dallas area. I don't know if he's from Dallas or what, but he had a fascination with Dallas, Texas, which is where SMU is. So he was reaching out saying like, Hey, I'll come there in the event that, you know, you let go while SMU gets rid of a coach needs a coach. So the next thing you know, USC is ready to move on or, and he ends up going to SMU infield does. Didn't he, didn't he end up going to SMU? Infield did. Infield, yeah. yep. So yep. Infield ended up going to SMU, and my must ended up getting a job he really wanted. So he schemed SMU to get over to get over to USC. It was, it was some little finger Game of Thrones type of stuff, man. So <clears throat> talk about politicking. He politicked and maneuvered the hell out of that situation. Mm. Got out of Arkansas. He didn't want to be there anymore. Got to where he wanted, despite them not having a job opening and use another job, bluff that job at SMU to get them to fire a coach that probably should still be there. Because if you look at it, why would you fire that guy and replace him with infield? Why? That's a that's a downward – no, they thought they were getting mus. That's crazy. You know, I, I like – the coaching carousel is an interesting thing. But, like, when I, when I think about the coaching carousel, I'm thinking about a big school coach – leaving to go to another big school that c creates this carousel within the power six, essentially until somebody finally is like, all right, I'm going to go hire a mid-major coach. Mm -hmm. I thought Louisville would start that coaching carousel. Yeah. Maybe, early b before we, you know, thought we were going to hire may and that didn't happen. But I then thought when, must went to USC that that was going to be the real start of it. But now it sounds like Arkansas might have to go into the mid major level to find a coach. Yeah. So there's not really this big, there's not a big of coaches this year. 
Well, there's just not a lot of great coaches out there right now. There's not like you can't miss guys who are looking to move. That's the thing. Like, who who could you possibly reach out to and be like, you know, that's a grand slam? Obviously, Chris Beard. I mean, for anybody that didn't know, Chris Beard's connection to Arkansas, I'm pretty sure they have a member on their board of trustees that was on Arkansas Little Rock when yeah. he was affiliated with them in some sort of way when Chris Beard was a head coach of Arkansas Little Rock, and they, they were very close. So there was this assumption that they could just pull him, and I don't know why it fell through. I won't claim to know that. I just know that they thought they were going to get him, and they didn't. Then they thought they were going to get Tang, and they didn't. And it's all because Musk schemed his way out of there. So it, it's it's just crazy. It's wild. It's crazy. Anyway, I don't know if you guys want to talk about anything else tonight or call tonight. Well, I'll be honest. I'm I've been listening and everything. Uh, Clutch asked a little bit ago, "Did we ever find out if Kenny scored twenty in a game?" And that's what I've been researching <laughs> the whole time. I can't find. <laughs> no. <what laughs> I would have never in my life thought that I couldn't find that. Somebody's record. got a tweet, Kelly Dickey, and I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to bring it up because people that you know what don't do it because if you didn't watch the show, you won't know why we're asking about Kenny Payne. And then and they'll people, be like, "Yeah, these assholes are these assholes won't let it I go. Can't find they they, a, just, they can't, can't move on from Kenny Payne." And it's like, no, we. And, and then you gotta explain. Then you gotta explain. No, literally, we had a guy. Thanks, Ash, on our show. <laughs> <laughs> During the game, it was perfectly like, legitimate answer. Doesn't he? He's still he's still on the two four seven board. Somebody could private message him on there. It's, does he still? Well, I don't know if you. I think every okay, so but often. here's my here's my thing. Like Sports Reference is a good website. They have a lot of those stats. Why do they working. have box scores from just the tournament games? Tournaments, like yeah. I can't find anything else. And like I, well, I remember well, this somebody else said, from that Kenny Payne there. I bet it was an '80s thing. I bet they just didn't have a lot of stats back then. Well, there's got to be some. Well, and the UFO media guides that. used to have all the old boxers. Yeah, stores, so that's yeah. how you'd have to find it. You'd have to find the media guides, I'd which Kelly Dickey, I'm sure has. I oh, have to dust off an old them. program, which I, I'm just kidding. at one that's time he had started putting together like his own U of L version of like a sports reference, basically. Yeah. But I, I don't know what happened to that because that project he had started five or six years ago. And he I don't know if he abandoned it or if he's just not ever finished it or what. Yeah. See, Dez like saying that he scored 24 on the 76 or yeah. I mean, but again in the NBA, you get 82 games and eight extra minutes. So there's a bit higher chance you're going to definitely have a game like that. even if like I've seen guys in the NBA to average like two points a game, but if you look at their career high, it'll be like they had one game where they had like 38, 41 points, and then they just just never happened again. I'm not saying right. Payne was that kind of guy. I actually think he had a pretty pretty decent NBA career, but in college, the answer was college. It was it was did he score twenty points? It just drives me. I, nuts I think he probably I did, that. but since Ash named him. Ash, you have been given the assignment to, to <laughs> tweet find, Kenny yeah. Payne and ask him if he scored next 20 time. points in college. Yeah. I've got to come up and improve it for the next show. Just just, just tweet Kenny himself. He he uses Twitter all the time. <laughs> Look at Clutch. <laughs> Clutch. Look at Clutch. Clutch says, did Kenny score 20? Is the new, did Wilt really score 100? Yeah. <laughs> hey, there, uh, I think there's probably yeah, yeah, a just picture tweet of Kenny, Kenny clearly uses in the Twitter locker account. room. With the twenty point written on a piece of paper, and I was gonna say, if somebody's good with Photoshop, That's... and you tweet me right now with Kenny holding the clipboard or whatever, and he's got twenty written on it, I... I'll put that on there right now. Helamore Hel- actually gives Hel-Mor me Hel-Mor the answer though that I that makes me the most nervous about. Uh, yeah, about whether or not he did, because that team was loaded with That's stuff. Why I was, so let me ask you this: but, Listen, if a man if a man averaged near fifteen points. It's like a ninety percent chance that he scored a, had a twenty point. But there's game. that ten percent. Okay, yeah. Here, listen to this. Listen I mean, they were this. a top five team. For he could have scored eighteen points and twelve points a whole bunch. Listen to this. So, <laughs> I can break it down how many points he scored per season. So his senior year, he scored four hundred and seventy nine points. That's the most he scored in any season. That so it makes me career, think though, like there's a chance a he didn't do it. I'm just, that, exactly. His freshman year, he barely played. Well, his freshman the, year, the since he played, he he played play all 34 games. But he might not have yeah, played Yeah, but he didn't many. play a lot. I mean, he was a bench guy. 
he had 121 points his freshman year. Sophomore year, he had 108. He only played he played less games though. I guess there's an injury maybe. And then junior year, he scored 375. So I don't know, guys. He's actually like he just he would have counted for the thousand point scores, but he just made it. Like he's one of the last few. I thought he was a thousand. I think. Points. I mean, you're probably the odds are he did score twenty. If he points, did it, it was probably his senior year. But that yeah. team had so many scores on it. I mean, LeBradford and Felton and Purvis and Tony yeah. Kimbrough. It's funny. I mean, this they really distributed their points. Everybody, everybody's responsible. It for finding this answer now. And no, before anybody says anything, it has nothing to do with Kenny Payne as a coach. It's because we were playing a game and Ash decided to name players who had scored 20 or more points in a game <laughs> at Louisville, and he mentioned Kenny Payne. I called bullshit because that's that's the game. I really didn't know, though. I was just trying to end it because we could go all night on that question. And uh, now we don't know, though. That's the problem. We have no idea if Kenny Payne scored. Really? This is Ash's fault for the name. It's Ash's fault for saying Kenny, and it's Kyle's fault for calling bullshit on Kenny. (laughs) And now here we are down this rabbit hole. I, I, I can't find the box Never, scores. It's going to take Kelly Dickey, but I am not tweeting it because people will think I'm being a Kenny Payne hater, and they won't know the context. And yeah. I actually like, know his email address. I'm going to email him. Desmond <laughs> said he went he went crazy in the UNLV game, so I looked that up, like search the date. I can't find a box score. I can't, I can't find that game that is they ever on played. YouTube because I watched it last year at some point. Oh, don't make me go watch a 40-year-old <laughs> no, game on I, YouTube. Ty, I know that you're. I know what you're saying, but that so, game actually was fun to watch and to get a real. It gives you a real good idea of how good that team was. I mean, they blew the doors off of that UNLV team that turned around and won the title the next year. And okay, well, I mean, this team. This team was top says five. He didn't play in the UNLV season. game. Now, we got, now, see, even the chat doesn't agree. Somebody said he went off against UNLV. Somebody else said he didn't even play in that game. He played. He was a starter because he hit a three right close to the end of the first half. Okay. Oh uh, well, I'm looking right here. I'm fast forwarding to the end. He's in foul trouble, so odds are maybe he didn't get there. Uh, I, I don't know if he scored twenty in that game, but I'm just saying that like he. <laughs> we'll never know. Oh, he's at the free throw line. Wait, 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 wait. Oh my god! Is he going to show me points? He has. Well, if they're like today's game, yes, but. Who knows about how the uh, yeah. broadcast? Should we put? Can we put? Purvis this on Ellison, I think, had the best game in that. In that, you me, can game. I pull this up? Can I Uh-oh. pull this up? Uh oh. Oh man, Larry Johnson. Jerry's he green. was one of Jerry's Larry green. Johnson's one of my favorite players, NBA players ever, man. Oh, you don't even want to pull it up if he did score twenty. I don't know. We're gonna find out together. And it's not gonna show it. This is gonna be impossible. Oh, mute it. Yeah, you got to mute. Well, how am I gonna? They're not gonna. Never mind. It's, this one's not gonna get anything. God, John's on in the background. Look how young he is, man. Jenny was fit, man. Pretty surreal. Look, they're not gonna show it, guys. Oh, 14 points. <laughs> yeah. Still, still 14. How much time left? There's not a lot of time left. Yeah, that game's almost over. He All right, listen, listen, <laughs> listen, uh, Pod. For five more points. <laughs> he had to get five more. In I mean, five minutes. points in four minutes is not out. Didn't they didn't have a three-point but... line yet, did they? Hey, if our, yeah, if our listeners want to stay with us the, the rest of the time. night, we're going to go through every game of 1989. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. We're going to watch every single game to find out the answer. And then people think, like, people that have no context will be like, these guys just can't get, get over it. <laughs> <laughs> Purvis oh. had a really good game in that one. You guys need uh, to move on, man. That well, game okay. actually oh, will illustrate how good of a player he what Purvis was in college, um, because he actually did a lot of things in that particular game that it's like, holy crap! I didn't realize how many points he had. And then well, at the end of the game, I'm telling you, I think this guy really could averaging 14 and a half could have had like a bunch of games where he just got between 12 19. and 18 points. 
Ash, correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I didn't get to watch, obviously, this game's... I was a twinkle in my daddy's eye when this game happened. So, Kenny was not really the score. He was more of, like, the the glue, like, defense, rebounding. He was a shooter for that team, but, like, really, he was, like, the third option at best mm-hmm. for scoring. Because Purvis and LeBradford were much more uh, of the scorers <laughs> on that team. And LeBradford was a freshman, so it was really unusual for a Denny team to be a school. I'm just dying. Sport. You guys Plus. know there's people that are in this chat that are fervently looking, whether they admit it or not. I know a couple of them said, like, I can't figure it out. But there's – like, nobody has come out and emphatically been like, in this game he scored this many points. <laughs> Look at Clutch. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Well, it's just hard <laughs> to find the box scores from back then. Clutch says it's really the funniest there's- thing ever. Nobody can find proof that Kenny scored 20 points <laughs> This is our, hey, thing, our like, guest. Our guest next now, week is going to be Kelly Dickey. Have this answer, and it's they're just as stumped as we are. We need Kelly Dickey, man. We need. We do now. need him. I'm not Kelly. I'm not if you watch this, reach out and get a bunch of people on my ass saying like I'm trying to be funny or something, which is funny, but it's not intentionally funny. This is just a completely. No, we have totally movie. moved on from the coaching era yeah. of Kenny Payne, and we're talking about him as a player. I don't think very good because of you. Because of you guessing I don't Kenny think, Payne. I don't think anybody thinks we're we're trolling him like no, that. No, I'm talking about like what's happening. I'm talking about like all my followers um, on YouTube. If I tag yeah. Kelly, Di- they're going to be like, "Why is this dude doing this?" They're not knowing about this episode. It was for couple- a game. It was fun, <laughs> and it's it's you know. Well, I don't have any. I don't have any Twitter followers, so I'm going to tweet them. <laughs> and there were times that we no, even no. played you Purvis have, and Felton no, at the same Pat, time. So you both have of those co-hosts of the first. third. No, don't even do it, Pat. Don't, because the last time somebody tweeted something crazy with co-hosts of Third Banner Pod. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Let's not That's do true. it. Oh no, no. My no, following no. compared to Ross's is like. Going from the young matter. center to, to, to Manuel's high school gym, though. Look, man, there's sharks in the water, man. That's what I learned when all that happened. I'm sitting in a hot tub, and I'm like, man, it looks like Third Banner account's got a lot of activity. What's going on? And then I realized why. And I was like – and there were people that were waiting for something like that. They were waiting. Yeah, I mean, that's – when you when you put your name out there, people people love to – Find the time to drag you through the water, man. That's right. You just got to be mud. careful. Yeah, <laughs> Hila Moore, you're correct. Jerome Harmon did miss that game because Jerome Harmon could never get his grades together. Yeah. God, man, he was he was a hell of a player, though, man. Yeah. Um, yeah and then Keith the Williams game. was like the three-point specialist. He would just kind of camp out at the three-point line, and Purvis or Felton would just kick the ball out to him, and he would knock down a three occasionally. Well, tell you what, if any of you guys in the chat, because I think we're going to wrap this up soon, if any of you guys in the chat want to DM me and just let me know if you find proof, you DM me on Twitter, DM the Third Banner Twitter account, and let us know if you find official proof. Because we just want to know, because we, we couldn't answer the question on the game. I called bullshit. Ash thinks he scored 20. And we we, we can't find proof. I'm calling it a win for me as of now. That he no, was, uh, even with that win, until, I still until, would. I still would have won. Yeah, but this is one of those things. You know what it's like? Those things that drive you nuts because you don't know, and it'll drive you nuts for the rest of your life. So somebody, somebody find it, please. I think I'm it's gonna... likely he got twenty because there was probably a, a couple other games where Purvis and LeBrafford and all those guys dominated the scoring. So Kenny only got like six points in a game. Clutch. I actually. Uh, there has to be. I actually asked, and, and it came back with Kenny Payne as a coach, and so I just maybe the, I need to rephrase the question. So, okay, all right, all right, guys. Any last words, Pat? Um, yeah, I, I'd like to thank Stephen again for coming on, man. Great guest. It was fun talking to him. Um, I'm a little bit older than Steven. I was right out of college when we won the national championship. Um, but it's cool to have like that period of, of life. You, you know, you're, you're in that college age range and guys your age are playing for your favorite team and they win a national championship. <clears throat> and it's probably 
other than being like a young kid who like really looks up to players like in this star studded, you know, dream. I, it's probably the coolest time to be a fan and see your team win in a national championship when people your age are doing it. Um, so yeah, no, I, I, it was, it was awesome to have him on, um, Dead period right now sucks because I want some more commits and I'm sure we'll get some uh, next week when, when that ends. Um, and we've got, we, we've got to figure out the setup, but I'm looking forward to the spring game and hopefully a, a live podcast at the spring game yeah, with, go over some of that. with some of you guys there, man. I, I want to meet somebody like Desmond in, in real life and, and shake his hand and tell him thanks for listening and stuff like that, man. And um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Well, what do you got? So Final did, words. Did you say me? Because you, you yeah, cut that out. So I was like, oh yeah. Um, no, nah, man. Kind of echo what Pat said. You know, we are so happy to have Stephen Van Trees on there. Great, great pod guest. Had a lot of good input. Clearly, still has a lot of love for the area, living here, and and having and, you know being at the press conference. Even after you know the guy really he admitted this. The guy he really was clamoring for at the time was Richard Patino. But the fact that he was able to, you know, as soon as he started hearing good things about Pat Kelsey, that's how you know, like, you're, you're a true diehard guy. Like, it doesn't matter who you really wanted to be here. Once you get the guy in place, you support him. And, I mean, to Pat, Coach Pat Kelsey's credit, he's absolutely given every single reason possible that we should be able to support him. So, that uh, that was great. It's great hearing his old stories. The game tonight was a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun and um i'll i'll, I'll probably you know I'll, I'll be dead and long gone and a part of my soul will still be like did kenny Payne ever score 20 points in a game <laughs> so that being said thank we'll you write it on your tombstone to the channel if you're new to the channel please like please subscribe and uh let us know how you felt about the game night how you felt about our episode as a whole tonight we we, we appreciate any and all feedback so long as you're respectful in your constructive criticism uh, that being said, guys, I'm going to end it with a go cars and pass it on to whoever. All right, it. what do you got for us? Yeah, um, again, I'm going to echo like they said, Stephen. Thank you for coming on, man. That was so cool. I'm going to remember that probably for the rest of my life, honestly, to get to talk to, you know, a member of the 2013 National Championship team, and that was so cool. Um, when it comes to the chat, hey guys, seriously, thank you all for watching. Um, thank you all for supporting. Let us know what you think of the game so far. Like, give us, I know some people have given me a little feedback here and there of what they like and what they don't. What did you think of tonight's game? Um, give me some more ideas. I'm up for any ideas when it comes to games and stuff. So, um, let me know what you think. Like and subscribe. All the good stuff. Thank you, everybody. Go card. Yeah, and um, for me tonight, it's uh, thank you, thank you, Ty, for putting the game together. It was really cool. Thanks, Stephen, for coming on and, and joining us tonight. Uh, that was fire. His his segment had to be the best guest segment we've ever had. Um, and then also we will be uh, announcing the exact details of our tailgate for the spring game next week. Uh, but I can't say it'll start around four o'clock um, on the day of the spring game. Uh, we will have uh, hot dogs, bratwurst, but it's BYOB. You have to bring your own uh, beverages. Uh, but we definitely look forward to having as many of you guys come out to and, and hang out with us for a little bit. Uh, and we just got to figure out what the parking situation is because I know, like, campus classes are still in, so I don't know, you know what parking is going to be like, whether or not we can actually host it right there. Uh, like, And I don't even know what they call the lots anymore. It used to be the green lot right there, but mm -hmm. um, but I don't even know what color they call it anymore. But Anyway, we'll figure that out and let you guys know the location uh, next week. Uh, but plan on it like four to six. The spring game starts at seven. So um, thank you guys. Hit that like and subscribe and turn on those notifications. Go Cards. Go Cards. Go Cards.